was pretty upset with him for not defending himself and getting caught by the blurg's ass threats. When I finally managed to free him, he lifted up his arms, made some movements, and then there was a box, and then he did some more movements, and... This is Nidak, my adventure. Written down in a better way than I can tell it. Chapter 4. The Squares The last one of the blurgs stumbled away in the direction the other had gone. The trees quickly hid them from sight. Nedak swung her halberd on her back before kneeling on the ground next to Kitty, congratulating the cat. He'd been the one to turn the second blurg away, jumping against the knob in precisely the right way. It looked like the training they'd been doing was paying off. She didn't think Kitty would have been able to jump as powerfully at the start of their practice. Purring loudly and giving all the head bumps, he accepted the pats, ear scratches and belly rubs with visible pleasure. His twisting and squirming shape, together with his cute grey tabby face and wide ear tips, brought a big smile on her face. If only she could do this for the rest of the days. Spending eternity cuddling with cats sounded like a good deal. She supposed that was why so many people were able to watch cat videos all day long. Unfortunately, that was not an option for now. Her apartment got attacked and she didn't know where it had come from. She obviously couldn't skip back to Earth before figuring out what had happened. Perhaps it hadn't been aimed at her. Maybe something had happened in the building. Nothing to do with her. Not an attack at all. That was difficult to believe. She glanced at her emergency bag, which sagged against a tree. She'd been sent on an urgent mission before, without prep time. After that, she'd made sure there was always a bag ready to go. There was a map in there, which should help with figuring out where they were. Once she knew that, she might come up with an idea of where to go. She glanced to the side and sighed. Nedek booped the cat on the nose as she murmured, We better check on our walking trope friend first. Chuckling at her own joke, the man really was the stereotype of a prince charming from a faraway kingdom. She walked over to what looked like a car-sized ball of brown yarn. Granted, only the size of a really small car, but she still grunted and rolled her eyes. She did tell him to stay away from their ass, didn't she? How often am I going to have to save this guy? With another sigh, she took the serrated knife from her boot and went to work on cutting the threads. They were quite thin but strong, resembling root vines, not like yarn at all. An hour later, she finally saw wrinkly and quite hairy flesh through the slim ropes. Gritting her teeth, she moved to a different part of the tangle of yarn. She was not going to expose his balls first. Estimating where his upper body was, she started cutting in that new area. When she finally managed to expose his head, she couldn't stop a sniff of relief. <laughs> Good, you're not dead. What was that? He cried out, terror on his face. She kept cutting to open up a hole large enough for him to climb through. She wasn't there just yet. Relax, buddy. You're fine. She sounded more calm than she felt. 
He hadn't even tried to defend himself during the fight. While she had been struggling to hit the knob on the blurg in front of her, he'd just been standing there like a stupid with a stick. His blurg hadn't hesitated in turning round and sprouting its threads from its ass. Nedek had to concentrate on her own fight too much to help him. By the time she'd managed to make hers stumble away, Winnie had been well and good rolled up. Before she had been able to engage the large and bark-like skinned creature, Kitty had decided that the ball had become too large to play with. So he jumped up against the blurg, aiming for the sweet spot. Clever Cat had seen that's what Nedek had been aiming for as well. After only a few tries, he'd hit the red knob right after the first one had left. The red knob numbed them enough to stumble off in confusion. It had all been part of her training, learning about all the creatures of the other realm and how to fight them. There was relief in the middle of her chest at the unnecessity of killing. Why didn't you fight? She demanded, still cutting. Okay, so maybe she couldn't manage to keep the calm face. Stupid man, giving me so much trouble. I'll need to buy a new couch. Probably need to find a new apartment too. She knew it wasn't really his fault. Or was it? But she had to vent her frustration somewhere. You're not going to cost me my perfect score too. I'll keep you safe until you get back to your stupid kingdom. What was it again? Parallelogram? Wherever that is. Even if it wasn't in the contract. No matter how long it takes. But it better not take too long. Fuck, there's still my deadline. How am I going to explain that? She kept on mumbling, not noticing the stunned look on his face. He wiggled a bit, testing out how stuck he still was. Parallelo. He cut in, swallowing visibly because of the fierce look she gave him. I do not know how to use a stick or a sword. Before he could continue, Nedek burst out. What do you mean? You don't know how to use a sword. Doesn't everyone in this realm use a stupid sword? You should be able to crawl out now. So much for the sword swinging gorgeous trope king he was supposed to be. She turned around to get her bag. No, of course not. Swords are useless. Neda grunted in agreement while he continued, sounding more confident with each word. He managed to get out the rest of the blur yarn ball. I told you, I am the master of the squares, defender of the triangles, chief of all lines. With that, he lifted his arms and made some strange movements, a bluish-green glow and mist tracing the pattern. Out of nowhere, a solid wooden square appeared, floating in the air between them. With a few more moves, and the sound of wood sliding on wood, the box turned into two four-sided sticks in an L-shape. These are my weapons. Once again, Nedek couldn't do anything else but laugh. This time until she cried, her cheeks and abs hurting but unable to stop. You have been listening to Nedek. Chapter 4. The Squares. Narrated by myself, Nadek. Adventured by and lived through by Nadek. Written in a better way than I can tell it by Astrid Jeff. Don't go just yet. We've got bloopers coming up. Before we get to those, we just want to say that if you head over to astridjeff.com, you can find transcripts and full chapters of this podcast. Even more, you can find an unedited draft of Nadek at least up to 15 chapters further than a podcast goes. So, if you're keen to know how the story continues, you have the option to go and read. 
find us on Twitter at Astrid Jeff and at Nedek and Kitty. If you like this show and would like to support it, a good way to do that is share it around to everyone you know. An even better way is to rate and review it on iTunes or whichever podcatcher you use. Don't forget to follow the show or subscribe for free. Sounded. She was not going to expose his balls first. (laughs) (sighs) Get it together. Estimating. (laughs) Oh, come on, do it. When she finally managed to expose his head, she... (laughs) Fuck, stop laughing. When she finally managed to expose his head, she couldn't snob... Snob? His blurg has... (sighs) There was relief in the middle of her chest at the unnecessary... There was relief in the middle of her chest at the unnecessity of... Until you get back to your stupid kingdom. What was it again? Parallelogram? Very... Oh, stupid bird. Stop. Stop being cute. Stop being cute. Parallelo. Parallelo. <coughs> <coughs> Parallelo. 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 Just waiting for the birds to stop. What the fuck? Thank you, Kongan.